So to change the background color of our output, we use the command background and we give it a color like black. Now notice if I take away these quotation marks, it doesn't work. So I need to keep whatever color we give background in these quotation marks. I can change the background by giving it different colors like this. I could also, if I wanted to, change it back here, for example. But what this shows is that I can call this command multiple times and then overwrite the previous one that was called. Notice that it matters the order. If I put background red after background purple, the color is set to red, not purple. So ordering matters, and we could call it as many times as we want, resetting it to whatever color, um, yellow, um, we, we want. The next part is coordinates. So we can show the coordinate system by calling the command draw tick axes. And here we'll see a coordinate system of the whole grid. And if we use the command crosshair, we'll be able to see the X and Y position of our mouse. So what we can see here is that the X axis is how far left and right we are. So if I move my mouse over to the right, you can see how the X coordinate is growing, but the Y isn't changing too much. The Y coordinate defines how far up or down on the screen we are. So you can see if I move my mouse up, the Y coordinate increases or decreases. The bottom left corner is what is zero, zero. So the zero, zero coordinate. Let's fill up the canvas with some shapes. Let's start with a simple circle. To draw a circle, I just give the command circle and I give it three numbers. Notice I need to give it these three separate numbers. Two of the numbers define its position and the other one defines its size. I have to give it all three numbers. If I give it just two, you can see I get an error. If I give it four, I don't know what will happen. Oh, it works, but we still get an error. What we need to give it is its X coordinate, how far along on the X axis, left or right it is. So you can see as I change that, where it's moving. It's Y coordinate, how far up or down it is. You can see as I change the Y coordinate. And finally, its size. If I give it something like one, you can barely see it. If I give it something like a thousand, <laughs> it's really big. <laughs> and again, we can have multiple circles, so we don't have to have just one. If I do something like this and I copy paste it, change the size of this guy, you'll notice how I have two circles. Different shapes require different numbers of arguments. These numbers over here that we're giving circle are considered or called its arguments. So if I want to draw a rectangle, for example, I give the command rect, but now I need to give it four numbers. It's x position, it's y position, it's width, and it's height. Now it's just a square, but if I wanted to make the height something like this, you'll notice how it elongates, or if I want to change its width like this. And now you can start to see how by combining these different shapes, you could start making cool and different, more complex drawings. Then we can change the color and look of our shapes. If we want to change the color of a shape, we use a command called fill, and it's very similar to how we do it in background, we give it a color over here. We spell it out. If I want to change the width of the border of my shape, I can use a command called stroke weight, and I give it a number, if I give it something like one, it's gonna be thin, you'll barely see it, but if I give it something like 10, you'll see that we're getting a much thicker stroke weight. 200, it fills up the whole thing because it the, the border is bigger than the color, it's the shape itself. If I wanna change the color of the border, I can use a command just called stroke and then give it a color the same way we've done before. I want to point out that ordering matters when we call these different commands of fill, stroke, weight, stroke. What fill does is it sets the color of everything below it. So everything that we define below fill will be filled green. Everything below stroke weight 20 will have a stroke weight of 20. Everything below stroke red will have a stroke of red. So if I want my circle to be green, but I want my rectangle to be red, I need to define fill after circle and do it like that. Now you can see that whatever color I put here only defines the rectangle. If I want to change the stroke of my rectangle, the border of it, I can put it to something, I don't know, let's go yellow. And now you can see that everything below here will have a fill of black and a stroke of yellow. So if I draw another circle and I put it at like 400, 400, 100, notice how it has the same color properties as my rectangle.